Hello guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to first understand gradient descent, then we will try to optimize the function real time with help of gradient descent. So without waiting, let's start. So guys, before understanding gradient descent, let's discuss a very simple problem where we are trying to fit a line on top of some points given in the table. We have y actual, x actual. These red points showing in the scatter plots are the y actual and x actual. And this blue line shows y derived and x actual. The equation of line is y is equal to mx plus c. So for finding out how good is the curve, we have to find out the residuals by subtracting y derived with y actuals. Then I am squaring up all those residuals and calculating the sum of squares. So this sum of squares gives me an idea how good is my linear regression on top of these points. I can vary the value of m and c and change the curve. So here you can see I am converting m's value to 0. So you can see that the line has changed and our mean square error has grown up because it's not a good fit. So what happens if I increase this point to 1? My mean square error has gone down. This line is able to predict some of the points. Now let's put up a plot where we are going to change the value of m and we are also going to check out how my mean square error looks like. So let's put a value of m0 first. For 0 my mean square error is 651. Let's put this in a table. Now let's increase it to 1. So my mean square error is now 419. Let's again put this to the table. Now increase the value to 2. My mean square error is 263 now. It has gone down a lot. Let's again increase it to 3. Now my error is 182.25. Now let's put 4. It has again gone down to 176. Now again increase it to 5. Oh, my mean square error has increased after increasing the value to 5. Now it is 246.25. So guys, now look at the curve. While moving forward in the mth value, I am going to see a de decreasing type of curve which goes down till 4th and now it started to increase. So this looks like a function which is decreasing. The only thing I have to do it to roll out or to find out some method which gives me the minima of this function. So here the gradient descent comes into play. So guys, let's understand the mathematics behind gradient descent. From our high school mathematics, we know that if you want to find out the minima of a function, we need to find out the slope of that function. Then we need to take small steps towards the slope until we reach out to the minimum value for that function. Here we want to decrease our mean square error and we can only change the value of m and c to do so. So first we will differentiate mean square error with respect to m. Then we will differentiate again it with respect to c. So here I have given the values what comes after differentiating this mean square error with respect to m and c. With respect to m when we differentiate it we get the value which is just a multiple of x actual multiplied by y actual minus y derived. We have already found out y actual minus y derived. Now we have to just multiply these residuals with x actuals. So here in the table I have added one more column which gives me the multiple of x actuals versus the residuals. Now at the end we need to sum out all these. So here we are getting 134.6. N is the total number of points. So that is 18. So let's put these value to this function. So once we will put all these value to this function, we are getting the value of dm is minus 15 and dc minus 10.8. For reaching out to the minima of this function, we need to reduce these values from our current m and current c. But these values are so large that we can miss out our minima and go to the further side of the rope. In the picture you can see if I will deduct this number with our current value I may go to the other side of the curve. So here comes a concept of learning rate. A learning rate is a small number which gets multiplied to these slopes so that we will not cross the minima and go to the other side. So let's take a learning rate of 0.2 over here. So we'll multiply our dm and dc by these learning rates. Let's deduct these values from our current m and current c. So if I'll subtract 0 minus minus 2.99 that will be 2.99 for m and 2.15 for c. Let's also check the curve that how much 
reduction in the mean square error we are getting after applying gradient descent to our function so guys as a starting we had 651 as a mean square error when we had value m is equal to 0 and c is equal to 0 now after updating our values our mean square error got reduced to 161 it's a huge decrease in the mean square error so guys you might have remembered in the previous example when we were trying to put random numbers we were not being able to achieve this 161 value even after five iteration but by applying the gradient descent we were able to get a very low mean square error in the first step itself so now we have again got the second values that is dm is 0.67 and dc is 0.31 so now we have to reduce these values from these two numbers and check out how much error we are getting i have put down those values 1.65 and 1.53 after reducing these numbers around 140 mean square error so you can see that after each and every further steps we are getting a decrease in mean square error this tells me that after applying the gradient descent to my regression problem i am able to decrease my mean square error with a very high steps and you can also see that the reduction of the error is very high in the first step but in the second step it is not reducing by that amount so this tells me that gradient descent takes a very huge step at the first point it gets us very near to the possible solutions then it further optimize our problem and find out the minima for the errors so guys if we take further step with gradient descent until we reach to a number where we are not getting decrease in our square errors then we can say that that is the optimal solution in that way gradient descent works out and gives us the minima of that function not only in case of linear regression we utilize gradient descent in all type of neural networks that we will show in our further videos so guys with this we'll close today's session please like share and subscribe and keep yourself updated with the new content by pressing the bell icon